fucking that woman with everything that he had. He hauled his little bitty leg back and he kicked her and he hauled it back again and kicked her again. And he was giving her what for, doing everything that he could to save his mom. That was horrible. Awful, awful, awful. And I don't know if the woman, because she didn't, at least in the video, it didn't, she didn't fight back at all. And I would imagine she probably didn't fight back because she thought she'd make it worse. And she had her kid there. At least, you know, she wanted to be able to get up and not have a, su- such a serious head injury that she couldn't be there with her kid. But, I mean, she was stomping on her in that. It doesn't say, in the reports that I've seen, it doesn't say the extent of her injuries. But, you know, she had to be injured. I mean, Kevin, she was, he was just stomping on her head. Oh, yeah, definitely. And you brought the point, Thug. That's exactly what I, what I was thinking when I was watching that video. And nobody was decent enough to say, hey, there's a kid involved. How about we knock this off? You got a good couple good punches in there because you're angry about the rumors. How about we stop it? It's gone far enough. But yeah. nobody was decent I'm, enough yeah. to do that. I'm going to just go out on a, on a limb and say that I think that, that those rumors are probably true. I'm mad at you because you were yeah. you were spreading rumors about me at McDonald's, so I'm going to stomp on your head in front of your kid, and I'm going to threaten your kid, too. Well, this is probably going to be a hell of a lot worse than anything that was said about her in, as my, my grandmother would say, the McDonald's. Pretty sure it's gonna be, this is going to be worse. I just, <laughs> I, it just made me sick that nobody intervened. Yeah. Nobody intervened at all, and there's no reason for that. If this woman was a real woman, she would have said, you know what? If you if you we're going to settle it, you leave your first of all, you don't settle, but what whatever, just for the sake of argument, don't do it while our baby's around, at least. Good grief. And I just I still can't believe nobody, nobody intervened. I want to beat all of them up. Nobody intervened. This is this is where we are at in a society now. Nobody intervenes. Nobody knows what to do. Everybody acts like my my kids play Minecraft. Have you ever played Minecraft, Kevin? No. Remember, I have not. my kids play it, so. Yes. Okay. <laughs> no, no, right. I have nothing against it. I just, you know, just in case you were going to get, you <laughs> were going to get, I was like, my baby plays this only, game. Only so. losers. No, no, I haven't played it. Nothing oh. against it. Uh, nothing, nothing against it. Nothing against it. Okay. Because, all right. Because I'll call Leticia Harris and I'll be like, here's where he works. No. Um, <laughs> no, this, this, um, there, the, in Minecraft, you know, you can like build stuff in Minecraft and all of this, and you can. There are villagers that live in Minecraft. It's very, it's actually quite fascinating. But the villagers don't really say anything. They don't really do anything. They just kind of stand there and look. Even if the most that they can do, kind of maybe, is if zombies go after them, they sort of run away. And um, they just stand there and look. One of their other little villager friends could be attacked by a zombie, and all the other villagers stand there and watch. We're turning into Minecraft villagers. Really, I just, it's just bizarre, absolutely bizarre to me. No one wants to protect themselves. No, protect them or protect anyone else. That is completely opposite of where I am. I believe that I, you know, it's my responsibility as a parent to protect my family. I protect myself and I protect my family. I got, I have, I have my safe, my firearms. I um, also keep a handgun right by my bed for protection. I don't keep it in a drawer. I keep it in my gun box. That's exactly what it's called, too. It's the gun box. It gives you safe storage and quick access. So when you need to access your firearm, if your home is invaded, if someone's breaking in, if something, whatever, if you know you are threatened, your children are threatened, you can protect yourself. And it, it's a lot quicker to open the gun box than it is to rummage through a drawer or to go run to your safe. The gun box gives you that quick access because it has an RFID scanner. Swipe over the sensor, it opens in a second. You can also use your fingerprint that has 360-degree biometric scanner built right into the top of it. It's made from aircraft-strength aluminum alloy. There's no getting into it unless with a fingerprint or your RFID scanner. That is it. No other way to get into it. You can use a hammer. Ryan Hyde, who invented it, sent his kids out in the driveway with this thing and a bunch of hammers. They didn't dent it. They didn't do anything to it. It also has an audible alarm, and you can get it with GPS locating technology. This thing, you don't even know what it is. It's very sleek it actually just looks like a piece of decor it keeps you your kids safe and it gives you that peace of mind this was designed by a family for use by a family and you can get it today at thegunbox.com go to thegunbox.com safe storage quick access so you can defend responsibly keep it here this is the dana show Talk live.
lines are open now at 866-455-9797. This is The Dana Show. DanaRadio.com. Find me on Twitter at DLash. I'm filling in for Glenn Beck on TV this evening, 5 Eastern, 4 Central. A lot of fun stuff planned. There's also some news that's coming today. I think it's today. I can't say what it is yet. You'll just, it'll, when it's out there, you will know. It's all good stuff. Just crazy good stuff. Uh, in the meantime, I was told, wait, Kevin, you told me that there is crab rangoon in California. That is correct. I texted a friend out in the Bay Area, and she said, yes, we have it, and she loves it. So it's it's out there, too. Yeah! yeah. I, what, well, okay, so, but the toasted ravioli thing, I, I don't know. Gary's on the line about this, line one, about toasted ravioli. We were talking about, like, food and whether or not this is something that's, like, specifically in the Midwest. Gary, good afternoon to you. All right, thanks for being on, Hello. 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 He's not paying attention. Oh, oh man, I got to get going now. Yeah, I can't sit here and wait. I couldn't hear anything, and I think he was talking to somebody else. Anyway, Gary was, <laughs> I said, I don't know what that was called was about. It would have been fun. Yeah. I really, he was, yeah. So, anyway, um, I had someone, yeah, someone here at the Blaze was like, what is toasted ravioli? What is that? It's like, what do you do to your pasta? Like, will you, it's like the noodle, but it, when it's breaded and deep uh-huh. fried, and yes. it has like meat or cheese or whatever in there. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. I, it's, it's quite delicious. It's unbelievably delicious. Uh, Stewart is on the line on the subject of Mississippi voter outreach, Thad Cochran, Haley Barber, and all of that insanity. Stewart, good afternoon to you. Hey, Dana. How are you doing? Thanks for taking my call. Excellent. You know, yeah, I've course. been listening to all this craziness since the uh, election uh, came in the next day. And what Barber and, and Cochran did as Republicans is deplorable. But here's what even chaps my butt more. They managed to find black people. Look, you know, I always talk to you about the democratic slave mentality. They went and rounded up their slaves, to, and, the, and the plantation manager said, listen, I'm going to rent you slaves out to the new wannabe slave masters, and the slaves just ran on down there like a bunch of sheep and voted for them. That's what chaps me, that there's so much ignorance. When they start talking about this dude going to take away your welfare, he going to take away your school ch- I mean, they don't have it anyway, so why wouldn't they want somebody in there to give them a chance of getting it? It's just it's mind-boggling that there's that much ignorance running around in that part of Mississippi. How about we forget about the southern borders and just build a fence around that little bitty area there so we can hem that <laughs> ignorance in? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Stuart, you, <laughs> you nailed it. You hit it. You hit the nail right on the head. Yeah, just, just build. We'll just... We'll just put that part. Of, we'll just put mis- that part of Mississippi. We'll take all the good people out of Mississippi. We can relocate them to Texas. We'll do that. But, but yeah, that'll that, work. And the thing, I'm sure there's a yeah. great bunch of people in Mississippi, but that bunch right there, that they need to, they do still need to be. They're not taking them out of their chains because they still got their chains on them. That's all I got to say, Dana. Thanks for mm, taking my God call. You, you have my a friend. wonderful day. You too. I appreciate the call in, Stuart, uh, as always. Yeah, this. And 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 what and what would probably make Stuart angrier is that you have people like Thad Cochran and Haley Barber, and and some of those they still they don't see what they did wrong, and then you also have the leader of the NAACP in Mississippi who doesn't think that what they did was wrong, and the way that they approached the black community in Mississippi was wrong. If Chris McDaniel had approached them like that as well, I would have said, "Oh my gosh, there's no hope in Mississippi." But I I just. That to me, it's like I don't understand why, why it is that the. Have you noticed this? The message changes with politicians if they're talking to Black America or if they're talking to women. Have you noticed if they're talking to women? What is it? What is the? What does it turn into? Oh well, ladies, you can trust Uncle Sam to give you free birth control pills and abortion on demand and and we'll look at the wage gap even though the wall street journal has done studies showing that the wage gap doesn't actually exist it's based upon choice um that's how politicians talk to women they talk to women like used car salesmen and i'm I'm not indicting all used car salesmen but but that or how a car salesman would talk to a woman in a stereotypical way that oh well here's your cup holder and your lighted vanity mirror they don't talk to women about opportunity or taxation or anything or, or job creation. They don't talk to women about that. But then that's how they talk to women. And then when they approach the black community, how do they talk to the black community? Welfare and 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 uh, welfare and food stamps and, and, and this. This is that's how they mo- 